Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by the virtualinstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with the virtualinstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, which is just the very best live broadcast in all of YouTube. What we do here on Getting <laughs> Sketchy is either myself or my good friend and fellow artist and art teacher, Ashley Hurst, tries to create a drawing for you guys within 45 minutes. Of course, we're also trying to import, impart some instruction during that process too. So it's just not us sitting here drawing. And of course we go back and forth and talk about all kinds of fun things. And then we've got you guys there in the chat box. So it's just a pretty awesome time. And it's for the next hour, 45 minutes of it, of course, will be us drawing. Um, so Ashley's sitting over there and let's check in with him real quick. How are you doing over there, Ashley? I'm doing well, Matt. Thanks for asking. I've just been um, checking out my subject and looking at my materials. The materials are, materials are pretty basic tonight, but we'll take a look at those in just a few minutes. Yeah, so Ashley obviously is going to be doing the drawing tonight. He's going to be working with graphite pencils on regular old white drawing paper. Um, if you want to take a look at the photo reference that Ashley is going to be working from, we're going to have it up right next to the drawing in just a minute. But you can also take a look yourself if you go to uh, the, the homepage here on YouTube, our YouTube channel page, and then click on the community tab. You'll see that photo reference there, of course. And of course, if you want to be notified when we post the new uh, the new photo references, of course, if you subscribe to the channel, you'll be notified. So subscribe right now and uh, click the notification bell so that you can be notified when we do post new videos. Now, um, Ashley has started making some shirts. Is that right? That's right. In fact, um, I sold one to Matt. Yes, and I'm wearing it tonight. And there it he, is. It was a surprise. He didn't know. Yeah, I had no idea. Uh, that I got this shirt, but it's a pretty cool shirt. It says drawing on it. Yeah. You can see right here. I've been wearing it all day long. Couldn't wait to wear it. Got a sweet, sweet um, yellow pencil on there. We, we never draw with yellow pencils, but it's the stereotype of pencils, so I made it right, yellow. Right, right. Very cool. Um, so if, uh, if you want a shirt like this or some of the other ones that Ashley makes, uh, what do they need to do, Ashley? Well, um, you could go to Amazon and type in drawing shirt and maybe Bain Designs. Bain is my middle name. I use that for a lot of things, including shirt designs. And so there's just a few on there and, and some are art related, but I'm going to be adding more art related arts, specifically art supply related shirts um, in the near future. And I can't wait to get some of those shirts. And that's Bain Designs. That's right. Uh, on Amazon. Bain Designs as in the supervillain that killed Batman. That is B-A-N-E, <laughs> the supervillain that killed Batman. <laughs> Not the supervillain that killed Batman part, just the Bane, <laughs> B-A-N-E. Um, anyway, we do this thing here live on YouTube, and this is pretty fun. It's laid back. Uh, we create sketches here. In 45 minutes, you can't really expect to create a finished drawing. But we do create finished drawings and paintings as part of our live lesson series, That's right. which is part of the membership program at thevirtualinstructor.com, which also includes a variety of drawing and painting courses. And these courses are extensive courses. So it's not just one or two demonstration, it's lots of demonstrations um, in a logically sequenced uh, presentation, along with eBooks. We are up to 19 comprehensive courses wow. now. And then each week, of course, the weekly live lessons, which are broadcast live after we're done here on YouTube, and then they're recorded. There's a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. There's weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute. It is really, honestly, an overwhelming amount of information, but that's all available to you uh, if you want to become a member of our program. And if you do, you can learn more about our program by clicking on the link in the description below, of course. But... Don't do that right now because we're getting ready to get sketchy. You can do it in a little bit if you want. You can join us for the live lesson after this if you want. Everyone yeah. starts for a trial. Um, if you want to get your feet wet or get your toes wet a little bit, there's also uh, the option to check out three of our course videos and ebooks for free. There's a link in the description below for that as well. If you do sign up to get those free course videos and ebooks, you are on our newsletter and uh, we'll email you when we post new lessons and videos and new courses and all that cool stuff. All right. Um, Anything else? I don't think so. I was oh. just uh, reading the chat a little bit while you were finishing up, seeing yeah. what everybody has to say. So I guess we can go ahead and switch the cameras around uh, and take a look at our supplies. We can, but I do need to say something about the chat box. I completely oh, forgot yeah. oh, about I'm sorry. the chat box. Yeah. If, if you are watching this live on YouTube, obviously there's a chat box. Um, you can post questions and ask or, or post comments and questions during tonight's broadcast. They don't have to be about what we're doing tonight. They can be anything art related. 
And uh, if you put in all capital letters, that will help me see it a little bit easier tonight since I'm gonna be manning the chat box. Um, again, if you put in all capital letters, help us eat, see it a little bit easier because sometimes the chat box gets going really quickly here on YouTube. And uh, also, if you like this video, make sure you give it a like too. It's a real simple, easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, that helps us out, of course. All right, now I think we're ready. Are you ready? I'm ready, let's do it. All right, let's it. switch over then. All right, so there it is. That's the sneakers. And uh, the first comment in all caps was from Alana. The question was, Ashley, do these sneakers still fall into the, quote, things you can walk on theme? That's right. In this season, I, I made a first drawing of a tree, a bench, and a little pathway, and then decided that my theme for the season would be Themes are things that you can walk on, like pathways. We did a set of stairs a couple of weeks ago. I was running out of ideas and got some great ideas from the members over at the Virtual Instructor, but settled on these shoes um, between last week and this week. Of course, shoes are something you walk on and maybe walk in. Maybe I'm getting a little loose with how I use prepositions, but I've been walking on shoes my whole life, so I thought they might be an appropriate and a little bit of a surprising subject. Also, Converse All-Stars are always up, always popular because they're horrible shoes made in like the 70s and people are still wearing them like crazy. So they're always popular and I've had a few pairs myself. So um, this drawing presents some challenges. There are quite a few patterns in here. There's the pattern that's gonna be down in the bottom left-hand corner and I'm interested to talk about that and to simplify that. We've got the pattern of the stitches, uh, we've got the pattern of the strings and the eyelets, but we also have some freedom in this drawing. It is a relatively soft subject. There's only going to be a few contours that are pretty crucial, and um, and the rest we can uh, we can be a little bit looser and freer with our proportion, and we may need to do so in order to get to taking care of all of those patterns, the strings. There's the there's the words. I don't think I'm going to write converse, but I want to get the star and the word star on there. So we'll have a chance to write across a form a little bit, which presents some of its own challenges that we can tackle and solve. So we'll see how this drawing goes. Um, I'm not sure if we'll get through the entire, you know, through the entire thing. It may still look like a sketch is happening when 45 minutes elapses, but I thought it might be beneficial to take a look at how to uh, approach a subject kind of like this. All right, sounds great. Uh, when you're ready to put up the timer, just let me know. But hello to everyone um, from around the world. I'll try to go through uh, all the places, although it's gone pretty quickly. But there's a lot of discussion. People are confused over Bane. Yeah, I know. So, it is, uh, it's B-A-N-E. B-A-N-E -E designs. And it may not be available worldwide. It might just be part of uh, oh, oh, that's true. the U.S., the United States. Uh, and Amazon some markets. of these shirts are available in, I think, Germany and Japan and the U.K. So... Um, all right, so I think you're, are you about ready yeah, to Yeah, I think I'm ready to go. You going? can go ahead and bring up the timer. All right, so 45 minutes here. Oh, let's get it. All right, so there is a little negative shape up here in the top right, I'm sorry, the top left corner. So I'm going to go ahead and try to grab that. And it starts just a little bit above the halfway point on the left side. Again, these shoestrings are, they move, you know, they're not, uh, not, rigid so if your shoestrings are close to these then that's going to be close enough is there anything special about the paper you're working on um no but i'm glad you mentioned that i actually do have the sketch pad that i'm working out of i did i dare tear my paper out but it is it is a windsor newton there we are and it is drawing paper not sketch paper so it's a little bit heavier but not that heavy it's a 70 pound paper it's okay. not quite white it's an off-white all right we got Toronto, Canada, New Mexico, Sydney, Australia. Okay, so we've separated the negative space from the positive space with the shoes from the background. Now, the shoes happen in here. The next biggest thing to do is to separate the two shoes from one another. So I'm going to try to draw the contour where the shoe that's sideways kind of bumps up against the shoe that's right side up. And so that starts not at the, in the very center, but just to the left of the center of the bottom edge. Start with a curve. There's a little bit of specificity um, to these curves. Also, folks from Colorado, uh, Philippines, uh, more from Mexico, Calgary, Alberta, Jackson, Mississippi, Minneapolis, 
Guys, the list is really long. So if I didn't get to shout out where you're from, forgive me. Germany, mm -hmm. <laughs> Ohio, more from Germany. So you're basically using the edges of the paper to, to find basically where important lines intersect. With right. We're, the we're lucky here. We have an advantage that the image, I'm um, sorry, the... Uh, subject matter actually goes off the page on all four sides. So we can use where these parts go off the page to help find um, where they belong in the center. Okay, so we've, you know, I like to work from big to small, like building a house. You start with a big foundation and then you start adding smaller and smaller parts until you finally get to things like doorknobs. So I like to look for the next biggest thing. And for me, I've already found it over here. It's where the sole meets the body of the shoe. And I just want to find where the sole or the rubbery part, the, the sole and the toe, um, meet the canvas of this uh, second shoe. Where does the sole meet the body? <laughs> It's an important question. It sounds not just for sneakers. Pretty existential there. Okay. And the toe of the shoe actually starts straight up before it starts to make a quick turn. Brent does art says the problem I have with drawing letters is tricking my mind to not want to write them. Hey, exactly. Yeah, you're right about that. You Good do point. You have to draw from observation just like they're anything else and not letters. They're just edges that lean in one direction or another. There's still negative space. Uh, there's still proportion to think about. Now, I didn't mention it, you know, I am using graphite, but I have an HP pencil right now, which is just like a number two pencil. And I also have um, an ebony pencil, or it's really a general's layout pencil. And I have a 3H pencil that's very light that I plan to use to shade some of these um, parts of white rubber that only have sort of uh, mid-tones and light tints of value. Okay, so I've got a few lines in here where some of this, uh, where some of this pattern business is going to go. We're going to get back into this, but we need to go ahead and start finding some of the laces and the eyelets in here. So just uh, working off of where I've already been, I'm going to try to find the empty triangle space that's down here near the toe of the shoe. So a few people were commenting that this photo reference was going to be very challenging. Um, That's true. How do you challenging. how do you feel about something like this? Because you and I have a, an approach to drawing, and sometimes subjects that people think are difficult, we may see them in a different way. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on in here, which is what makes it challenging, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some. There's a lot of pattern in here, but behind some of these more complicated patterns, like in the shoe and the eyelets, there's, a, there's sort of a, a simpler way to look at them. And so hopefully this will help you um, kind of organize and structure information, visual information like this that's complicated, but, it, but it, because it is a pattern, um, there's a pattern to it, we should be able to get pretty close. So let's just try to get in that with the eyelets. They all go in a row. So the first thing I want to do is create a shape that has a gentle curve to it up into the corner that followed the direction of these eyelets. Then we'll separate them into smaller parts or pieces. Yeah, there's lots of repetition happening. Right, it's all about, this drawing is all about repetition. And as a result, it creates some visual rhythm. We know that rhythm is created through repetition. You know, with the beat in a song, we hear the bass drum in a consistent location or, or a consistent pace in the song mm -hmm. and, the, and the snare drum in the same way. And that repeats. And in a drawing or painting, we have, a, we have elements that repeat. It creates, as a vis, uh, creates a visual rhythm. Okay, so the first eyelet is going in, and I'm just going to run them all right through this little channel that I've drawn. It's not really there. But that'll help us, you know, arrange them so that they you know, look pretty, um, uh, pretty structural, even though they're on sort of a soft subject. They're... Um, they're um, they don't really change their direction too much. They're all pretty much oriented in the same direction. So the first eyelet is, is right through the center of the composition, just to the left of the center. So my pencil tip is about where the center of the picture is now, if that helps you find where to start this first. Uh, I don't know if I'm calling this the right word. I'm calling it an eyelet. I don't know if that's right, but maybe it's a grommet. Uh, we all know what you're talking it's a about. It's a shoe grommet. 
Okay, so a lot of these ovals are really their ellipses are going to get covered up partially with the um, with the shoelaces. So we just want to get them in pretty close and just generally notice that they're wider than they are tall for the most part. Uh, Brent Does Art says, I'm pretty sure there hasn't been a pen and ink drawing this season. What's up with that? <laughs> well, there's a couple of things up with that. First of all, pen and ink is not necessarily a super quick medium. It can be. It can be a looser medium. Uh, but it is a little bit more time consuming. And I should also point out the season is not over yet. That's right. Good point. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got a little pattern now of here of ovals, and we'll start working our shoestrings into it. Um, we'll get to shading as quick as we can, but we've got a lot of hard edges to put in first. So we've already started one shoestring, and it's this funky little triangle. It's not really a triangle. It's got a little, way more than three sides, but it don't want to be a triangle. And the very top of it is already a shoestring. So I think that's a good place to continue. So this is uh, where this little corner is and I'm kind of air circling that's where the shoestring starts to bend a little bit more downward yeah and there there's uh, there's some discussion about how much time not that you have Ashley but that other people who are who are trying to draw along have sure um, it, we're, we're working on a 45 minute time frame here if you want to work slower you can definitely do that. So don't don't feel the pressure of, of the 45-minute timer if you're doing this No, that, that, that is for us. The pressure is for us. Yeah, you can that... spend a few hours on your drawing <laughs> if you'd like, or a couple. I mean, I would like to spend probably about three or four hours on a drawing like this um, ordinarily if I wanted to capture just everything it has to offer. All right, now I'm just kind of following these contours using the eyelets as a guide as to where to start and then noticing where one shoestring dips down and touches the one that's below it. So the third, I guess the third string up, I feel like it pops out from behind the second string up right about here. I know people are ganging up now. Someone says, yeah, where's Ashley's junk drawer ballpoint? Love the nut and bolt. <laughs> <which turned laughs> out so cool. Okay, we'll do that again. Yeah, but, I, I was going to go color for my last drawing of the season, but maybe we should do a, a cheap ballpoint pen drawing. The season's not over. There are more drawings left in this season. That's right. You and have, you have I, two. I have, I two. have plans, guys. Okay. And okay. I don't know what Ashley's got planned for his. You got, what, two more or one more? I have one more. I, so that means I have two more. Yeah. You have one more after this one. That's right. So I have okay. two more one, this two, season. One, two, three. We'll just kind of keep working our way up. And remember, we're not too worried about proportion tonight. Because these are, you know, the shoes themselves, and especially the shoestrings, are soft objects that aren't always in the same position. So different than a couple of seasons ago where I drew a car, a beetle, you know, the proportions had to be right on or it looked, um, you know, it looked a little bit uh, wonky, a little, well, it would have looked soft. But the, this is a soft subject, and that gives us a little bit of, of uh, flexibility, we'll say. And almost there. And the contour lines are almost finished. Yeah. I mean, you're... You, you, you got a little bit. I mean, you could keep going with the details, but that's kind of what I was alluding to earlier mm -hmm. with the complexity of this drawing is it's not as complex as you think it is. It's, mm -hmm. it's a lot of contrast some, and a lot of pattern. And right. That, that looks, it just looks complex because it all hits us at one time. You know, the visual impact of this image is pretty immediate and strong. So in other words, don't shy away from subjects that you perceive as being difficult um, because a lot of times you, you find that they're not quite as difficult as you thought they were. Just got to give them a shot. Now, Matt and I do draw pretty fast, um, partly because of the practice we've gotten on this show and then also just from experience. So I'm not really thinking too hard or second-guessing my, my line choices. I'm just kind of going with them. If you want to go a little bit slower, that's totally okay. All right, there we go. There we go. So we probably go ahead and start doing a little bit of shading now and then get into those details. And we're going to 
we're going to find the stitches with our shading. I think the way to handle these stitches is just to think about them as thin, skinny white lines and then break them up into some stitches as a second step. So the shoes themselves are pretty dark. They really only have two values, um, nearly black and then sort of a, a dark gray. And then the, the whiter parts or lighter parts are, you know, a, a tint of gray and then white. So we don't have a whole lot of values in here. Our only real mid-tone is happening in the background. I think I'll go ahead and start up there. Okay, Simon says, non-art question, how long have you two been live streaming? I'm, I am, uh, I've been live streaming since 2012 as part of the membership program at the Virtual Instructor. And then I started getting sketchy, I don't know, three or four years ago. Yeah. And I, I yeah. just, it was just me for... A couple of seasons? For like three or four seasons, oh, okay. I guess. And... Um, then Ashley joined a few seasons ago, and it's way better having two people here. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's and Ashley joins me for the live lessons too after this too. So, which is part of the membership program. So, uh, so I guess the the accurate answer is 2012. Now that was before uh, live streaming was available on YouTube. So, um, on YouTube, I guess it's been about five years, maybe four or five years. All right, a blending stump Break, has been pulled out. Breaking out a little stump action, uh, and I'm, I'm not pressing down very hard. You know, to, I'm okay with sort of that little bit of banded quality showing up in, in the background in the direction that I shaded because it does kind of mimic the wood grain in our background, but I am softening it just a little bit. All right, it's probably still a little bit light. Um, there are darker patches in there, but I'm going to go with that for now. Go ahead and get down into the shoes. It's got a few shapes down here that are really hard shadows. It looks to be maybe a subject in the sun, possibly. So we've got some strong, sharp edged shadows in places. I'm shading with an HB pencil right now. I have not broken out the layout or ebony pencil. Yeah, you can get uh, the HB pencil is a pretty versatile pencil. You can get quite a Quite a range of value with just that one pencil. And you can use it on a standardized test. You can, yeah. And your your answers are readable. Right. <laughs> so so when, when, you know, if you are a, a college or high school student and your teacher says, you may only use a number two pencil, for, and this is for the paper pencil test, which are, there are only a few of left anymore, um, you can... Uh, with confidence, get out your drawing pencil because it's going to work just fine as long as it's an HB. Now, I'm going ahead and putting some really dark marks in at the bottom of these eyelets that are the shadows. So I'm finding the, some of the darkest sh shadowy portions of our shoe first, and then we'll work back towards the light. So really just two values at this point. Well, three if you include white. Yeah, three if you include white. And for those of you who don't know, value is just simply the darkness or lightness of a color. But what Ashley's doing here, most people refer to as shading, but it's really just developing the value. Because we can go either way. You know, we might lighten. Right. And lightening is not shading. So I had a teacher that wouldn't use the word shading. He said rendering. Mm -hmm. And I liked that. Yeah, I like that. Because, you know, it's kind of more, we're rendering form through value. Now, value also influences the illusion of texture and clearly the illusion of form and the light. So value is so very, very important. But if you guys have been around the channel for a while, you know how important value is. I like to say that value doesn't, in, in art, value doesn't refer to how much something is worth. But if you do a good job with value, your art will be worth something. I don't know if that makes any sense. Okay, so Kate is asking, so you've talked a lot about fixing oil pastels in previous episodes, but what about what would be the closest thing to an archival surface for oil pastel? Well, I mean, as far as an archival surface, I guess we're talking about the paper. Right, so, it's the paper. Right, so I, I would stick with, uh, with a 
good Strathmore or Canson paper that's listed as acid-free, and I think the Mitant's paper is great for oil pastel. Yeah, you just look for, look on the surface of the, the pad or look about the information, look up the information on the paper that you're choosing and make sure that it's archival. And uh, you're still going to see with oil pastel some of the oil seep through the back of the paper. I don't know if you noticed that before or not, but that does happen. But that shouldn't, that shouldn't deteriorate or destroy the paper. Um, I don't think it would, anyway. Okay, Brent Does Art says, last night I came across pencils labeled 2HB. Thought it looked odd. Maybe it was a misprint. That pencil might be worth something in the future, just like misprinted currency. Okay, New Force says, I bet Matt has never seen or heard of Steedler EE pencils, or is anyone here? Maybe a few people. I don't think I have either. Now, I've heard of EB pencils, and maybe EE is similar to that. Maybe it's a double ebony. Ooh. I'm not really sure. That's what that might mean. Double dark. All right, I'm working on that really dark black okay. stripe that's part of the rubber sole right now. Kate adds to that, uh, I've read a lot about oil pastels supposedly destroying whatever paper you put them on in a fairly short period. Unfortunately, I don't know where my old ones are to check the theory. Hmm. Well, I have oil pastel works that are over 20 years old, and they have not destroyed the paper. So I don't know if a short period of time is uh, longer than 20 years old or so, but I do have oil pastel images that are about that old and the surface is still intact. So um, I'm not really sure what to say about that. I'm sure that there are some and papers that oil pastels will... probably do have oil will... spots on the back, yeah. don't they? Um, Anthony asks, how do you clean the stumps that have become too dark? I use sandpaper. And a lot of stumps, or sometimes drawing kits will, that come with stumps, will come with a little tiny sandpaper pad that has pieces of sandpaper that you can peel off as they get dirty. And I use the sandpaper pad to kind of sharpen them too. All right. Thanks for that comment. Someone says, I'm glad to finally be watching this live. I'm a big fan. You guys inspired me a lot. Thanks for that. I love to hear that. Um, hey guys, do you like water mixable oil colors? Any advice? I, I like them just fine. Yeah, I love water mixable oil paints. In fact, I don't use uh, traditional oil paints anymore. I only use the water, water mixable oils. I, they use, I use traditional oil paints, but if I run out of a color, I'll grab a tube of the water mixable and just mix them right in. Yeah, the uh, water mixable oils behave in a very similar way as traditional oils. In fact, they're pretty much exactly the same, except they can be cleaned up with water, which is nice. Um, New Force adds, Stiegler EE pencils are fantastic. And it is the staple pencil for artists in Thailand. Okay, very cool. Good information to know. All right, if you look down here in this area... You can see I've got some pretty clean little white stripes in there. We plan to break those up into stitches a little bit later. There's some complexity here where the stitch pattern is doubled up. I'm just ignoring that. You know, this is just a, we're, it's a reference photo. Nobody's ever going to see it. So as long as we get the stitches in there, then uh, the very subtle nuance of, of stitching that uh, where I guess where the sewing machine started or stopped, that doesn't matter so much. Okay, uh, we've got some more information. New Force says in the West they replaced it with Mars Lumin Lumograph Black. And I have heard of those pencils. Okay. And that Pat adds, I read that some of the 8B pencils made in Germany are stamped EE for the Asian market. Steedler still makes the EE grade pencil. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so same pencils, just a different designation for the market. Mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. Kate says, thanks, Matt. That makes me feel better. 20 years is fine by me. Yeah. <laughs> 20 years is fine by as me, As long too. as you're using, um, you know, higher quality oil pastels and also you're working on artist-grade paper, or at least that it's acid-free or archival, 
I can't really see a reason why oil pastels would eat in the paper or destroy them. But like I said, it will put some some oil spots on the back of your paper, but that shouldn't be any concern. That's something that uh, something similar happens with colored pencils, wax-based colored pencils. It's called wax bloom, and it doesn't come through the back of the paper, but it actually comes up to the surface of a colored pencil drawing. If you use um, wax-based colored pencils and you heavily apply the pencil, sometimes you'll notice kind of a, a milky, cloudy surface over the top of a colored pencil drawing. And you can just wipe that away with a slightly damp cloth. Um, so it doesn't actually destroy the colored pencil drawing. So I think that's kind of similar to what's happening with the oil pastel uh, works on the back of the paper, maybe. All right, getting the surface is covered is pretty tedious. We're going to have to get a little darker, but that won't be so bad. Or I guess it's not tedious, but it's pretty repetitive, so... Thanks for filling up all that airspace, Matt, while I had to cover some space. <laughs> well, it seems like this paper, it's somewhat of a higher quality paper than you've worked on this season, do you think? I think so, actually. Uh, because yeah. I can see a lot more of the tooth of the paper. Yeah, it, it is supposed to be medium grain, but it's, mm -hmm. um, it's holding, the tooth is really holding up. There's still plenty of room in there, plenty of room. All right, so I'm going to um, go ahead and start finding the stripes that will become the stitches that go along the side of this shoe, and we'll be into the bottom shoe in just a few minutes. Oops. Miss this little gap up here. Um, Bob says, speaking of pencils, have you tried the Pitt Matte Pencils 14B with no shine? I haven't. Um, there, there are so many materials out there, and I have tried a lot of them. There's lots of different brands, and I'm looking forward to trying the Faber-Castell matte pencils, which everybody is, seems to be talking about uh, there. So, all the rage these days. All the rage, and I like the fact that the art manufacturers keep coming out with all these different products, but uh, one thing you probably want to be careful of is that you don't go from product to product searching for the perfect medium um, because there might not be a perfect medium. And, you know, there. in some ways, the perfect one is the one you stick with and master. Yeah, or yeah, exactly. Or the one you're using at the moment. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, I, we, we knew a person who, uh, well, we didn't know them personally, but there's a person that w worked in our school district mm -hmm. an art teacher who collected art materials that's right and the collector just collected art materials like to a level of hoarding and almost could open a store she could have opened a store when she passed away she had so many art materials that she left um i, w I went through all of them and we had to use a whole classroom to organize all the art materials and we gave them away to the 120 plus teachers in our school system. In fact, and some of these pencils all, I'm using tonight could be from that and, hoard of art supplies. Yeah, and all of the art teachers in our district got stuff, and a lot of it was new stuff. And then even then, there was tons of stuff left over. I think she had three rooms in her house that were wow. full of art supplies. I hate that she didn't have a chance to use them, but I know she spent a lifetime using art supplies. Anyway. Right. She used some of them. Yeah. But uh, most of them were barely used. There were lots of things that were just never opened. Okay, so... I've got a little triangle down here that is smaller than it is in the reference. It doesn't matter. And you may have some slight discrepancies in the proportions of these spaces between your um, threads or stitches as you lay them in. And it, it really doesn't matter as long as they make this pattern. Cynthia, I see your question that you have a question about your membership. If you do have a question about your membership, the best place to ask that question is using the contact form on the website. Um, but I'll go ahead and answer that here for you, too. If you do have an annual membership, your renewal date is listed um, on your account page. So you can log in and uh, see when your renewal date should be. Um, 
hopefully that helps. But uh, if you if you want a specific question or if you want me to give you specific information, if you'll send me a, an email through our contact form. Now, these shoes are really dark, but there is some contrast um, right in here where the shoes kind of come together. I'm not shading quite as dark as what we see in the reference right now, but I am darkening this area on the first shoe just to make sure I don't lose that little bit of contrast where there is some light um, running down the edge of this second shoe's contour. We'll get that value in first and then get dark again. So I was wondering if you were going to handle the stitching with uh, an eraser. Well, so. you know, I do have the coveted electric eraser, mm -hmm. and it would have been a good choice. Um, but I've, I actually drew a set of Converse shoes kind of like this a couple of years ago and, uh, and handled, you know, the stitches in this way. And I thought I enjoyed that, and I thought it'd be good to share. Yeah, it'll make the whites whiter anyway. It's true. Okay. I didn't mention it before, but my picture plane is four and a half inches by six inches tall, which isn't crazy large. So if you're working bigger than that, then don't be frustrated if you feel like you're falling behind. It really has a lot to do with the, in terms of what we've been doing here in the last 10 minutes, just laying in some broad values. Um, a larger piece of paper is just going to take more time. Put down patches of value, trying to overlap them so that they fit together pretty well, and then go over them lightly or with a little less pressure in another direction just to pull those patches together so it doesn't feel patchy. Okay, and we'll tone that guy down a little bit. Just tone that. There we go. All right, so we've um, we've made it. We, we haven't really addressed any of the white areas, so I think we'll go ahead and start doing that. Start working on some of those patterns, and just see how far we get. So um, let's get down in here into this uh, this weird bumpy pattern. So we do have, and of course, you know, I'm gonna have to put a few more marks on here, but I think this line is where those little um, diagonal lines are, and. They are dimensional, but for right now, I'm just going to put in some diagonal lines as placeholders where they are. We'll see if we get back to them. And then below that is that very interesting pattern that I'm attracted to. It looks really complicated. It really looks like little sideways pyramids all crammed together. Um, but what it is is a checkerboard pattern with another pattern on top of that. So here's how we're going to start. With some diagonal lines... And it's, I guess I should say it's almost a checkerboard pattern. We're going to crisscross, we're going to crisscross some diagonal lines so that, um, so they look a little bit more like parallelograms, a little bit wider than they are tall. All right, there we go. I didn't count them. I think I've got actually more than what's in the shoe, and that's okay. We don't have time for that. <laughs> and then inside of each of these, we'll just shade them with a little bit of gray in the bottom half of each of these shapes. You know, there's so many different ways you could have drawn that pattern, and um, that's just one way. Sure. And I was thinking when I was looking at it, what, what would I do? And I would have drawn horizontal lines, I think. And then oh, put through the, the points. Through the yeah, points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. But it would, we would, it, it would have ended up the same. Yeah. And I think that that is important for people to realize that because there's so many people that get wrapped up in feeling like they're doing things the right way. Well, that math class did that to us. Yeah, I know. All those math classes we took. There's right? so many things, so many different ways to be right in art. So uh, just don't overthink things, guys. Okay. Now, these little, uh, these little triangular shapes, they do bleed together a little bit in some of these stripes. So it's okay to bring them together along the contours of some of our diamond shapes, a little bit more on their, on their left. 
the left of each of these little shapes kind of bleeds into the one that's above and below it. So you, you know, that pattern is similar to what you might see on the snake. It's true. The scaly. I don't even want to look at it now. <laughs> I don't even want to look at it. Not, not a big fan of snakes. But if you had a three dimensional snake or, you know, you, you had a snake and you're trying to draw that three dimensional pattern. It, you, this would, well, this it's would be a good similar. way to approach that same kind of thing. Yeah. You're right. All right. And then, of course, these aren't entirely white. Um, so there's some a little bit of gray over them, too, or a light gray over the, uh, the lighter parts. So I, I have switched to a 3H pencil just so it makes my marks a little bit, uh, a little harder to get too dark because that's what I'm worried about in these areas is I tend to be heavy-handed. And so switching to a lighter pencil helps me, lighter weight pencil. There we go. Leave a little bit of extra light right there where there's a bend. I don't see it in the reference, but that's okay. All right, now this business down here might get a little bit of the <laughs> electric eraser. That, uh, that pattern down there is yeah, there's some, similar to what's above. It's just a there, thousand times smaller. It, it is. It's the same pattern. <laughs> You're right. It's the exact same pattern. It's just smaller than my pencil tips. They look like dots, and you could totally leave it out. I mean, we could just leave it just like this, just a band of gray, and that would be all right. A little bit of light gray between these darker marks, leaving a little white spot next to the dark mark. And it gives it a feeling of being dimensional without having to work too hard to make it happen. All right. Now, uh, we need to get over here. Oh, it looks like we've got plenty of time. 11 minutes. 11 minutes. Plenty of time. <laughs> So uh, you could do this whole drawing sure. in 11 minutes. Yeah, sure. I'm going to switch back to my HB pencil really quick <laughs> and hit this this rubbery black stripe. There is a little highlight on that stripe, so you want to be careful with that. It's not it's not white, but it's a highlight. So I isolated it and then toned it down just a little bit. Seems to work okay. Okay, so the, the lettering, I'm going to move the word star out a little bit because I want to get rid of converse and I want it to make it, make it still feel like it's kind of centered. So I'm just going to make a guideline. You know, we're, we're drawing letters, not writing them, but if we were writing, you know, it's easier to write on lined paper. So we're kind of making a piece of lined paper for ourselves. All right, maybe I'll make it a little bit wider. I think our letter is a little bit, little bit bigger. Okay, <laughs> here we go. I'm reading Thomas's comment here. I think it, he says, I think it's funny that Ashley is drawing shoes that we all hated because they were the poor kid's shoes 50 years ago that were under $5, I and know. kids now a days love them. And they pay way more than they're worth. You're right. Yeah, but I think... I don't think there's still... A, I mean, I don't have a pair anymore. My daughter has a couple pair. I'm not sure how much I've paid for those. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I think my, my dad played basketball uh, in high school, and I think he wanted Chuck Taylors but couldn't afford Chuck Taylors. He could not afford them? Could not afford Chuck Taylors. What was I he think. playing in, bare feet? I mean, it was probably canvas sneakers like this, but I don't think they were the Chuck Taylor ones. I think they were considered, like, the good ones. Um, I don't know. I may be wrong about that, but I know he's told me stories about not – being able to have the shoes that he wanted. And that's why he got you any shoe you wanted. Uh, no, that's not true. I <laughs> definitely didn't get a shoe, any shoe that I, I I'm wanted. Just I'm just kidding. Um, all right, you might have noticed that I've drawn little boxes for each of the letters. Now, I'm blowing it all up, you know, making star bigger. I've moved it out a little bit, but no one will ever know because they won't see our reference, and I'll make it easier to draw. So as long as I keep my letters inside these boxes and I use the straighter line of the T to help me figure out the angle of those boxes. And then uh, they should warp on their own as long as I'll use the box as a guide to appear to follow the contour of the shoe or follow the shoe's form. 
Buddy asks, uh, do you actually store all of your sketches and that questions to both of us? And yeah, we do. I do. Store anyway, them? I, I throw all the sketches from getting sketchy in, in uh, the drawer designated for sketches. Yeah, I, I do too. <laughs> I store all mine. They're in folders and racks and portfolios and things like that. Um, and, you know, talking about the shoes and how playing basketball in these shoes would have been rough. Yeah, I agree. But you you got to remember, shoes have come a long way. <laughs> um, I have some Jordans from, I, I guess, from the 80s or early 90s, whenever that was. And they're not, they don't feel that much difference from Converse All-Star Chuck Really? Taylor's. The very first? They're Air very Jordans. firm on the bottom. <laughs> Do you know the name of the designer that made those shoes? Uh, no, it wasn't... He's pretty famous. He designs a lot of sports shoes. He didn't do... He was an uh, athlete and a designer back in the 70s. And that's why he was interested in designing sports shoes. Well, there was one set of... He did not do maybe the Jordan 2s. I'm not, he did the original one that had the elephant print on it. Cause the elephant, that's three. Okay. That's, those that's those the were the third. ones that he designed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess it wasn't. The it first. wasn't the original ones. Now the threes, they that's when the shoes started getting real bulky. Yeah, I have some of those too, and they're real heavy. Well, like they, you would not want to play. They're very cushiony. Yeah, real but soft. they are super heavy. <laughs> shoes are so much lighter. Than they're they so used much to be. better now. I mean, these Converse so much better. are really heavy. You know, it feels like there's nothing to them until you pick them up, and the soles are about. You know, they feel like they're about two pounds each. I, I typically wear New Balance shoes. They're pretty light, and they're um, they're norm core, normal core. So, and I'm into normal core. So nowadays, normal core. Yeah, it's kind of like hardcore, but normal. Whatever the <laughs> whatever the most normal thing is. You know those commercials where they say you're becoming your parents. Yeah, that's me. That's there. That, that's when it those right commercials there. come on. I get up and walk out of the I'm room. I'm wearing normal core. They shoes. make me feel horrible about myself. <laughs> And I get up and I just just go turn all the lights off in the house every time I see that commercial to save electricity. Um, no, I'm just kidding, but I, yeah, I I'm like wearing Vans I dress normal right core. Now. I'm I'm kind of a shoe connoisseur. I I used to draw shoes growing up. I used to want to be a shoe designer. Well, that's why I thought you might know the name and of I that designer. Collect, yeah, I've got his I've got his. Right. image in so my head i think his name if i got but it right I'm, con- I'm not certain about his last a, name but tinker hatfield i think it's tinker uh, hatfield yeah. that sounds familiar and i saw a documentary yeah. with designers abstract on yeah. netflix yeah that's what I it's saw. a great it's a great yeah. series if you're into art and design um you know netflix doesn't pay us anything <laughs> so we don't get it's not a it's not a, that kind of an endorsement but it's a great little uh uh, documentary series on different designers that have made an impact in, you know, in their portion of the of the design world. All right, I got it in. At least I got the word star, and uh, part of it, uh, part of the all star. I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of the actual star in here also. So I blew all this up just to make it a little easier to get into and draw, and that's okay. You know, we make we make adjustments and changes to our references. As we see fit. All right, this looks like a good spot for another point. All right, and then there's some gray over that. So I'm going to switch back to my, I know I'm down to just four minutes, and I'd like to have about 40 more, but I'm going to go ahead and switch back to, whoops, a 3H pencil for some of this. Well, the essence of the shoes are there on the paper already. The essence it's just a matter is there. of pushing the range of value. Right. I can really hear the music speeding up in my head now. <laughs> <laughs> the video game music feels like I'm yeah, not going to make it music, to but the end of the board. Complain about it, so should play speed music. <laughs> music that just gets, it's the same melody and it very slowly gets faster right. for a whole 45 <laughs> minutes. 
But, you know, we would never hear it, so the drama wouldn't be there. So there's some songs like that, like Stairway to Heaven. We could play Stairway to Heaven. Doesn't it kind of do that? It starts out well, slow. We couldn't play that because of copyright. Well, we couldn't actually play that. <laughs> but songs like that. Songs like that. A 45-minute long version. Okay. Yeah, so but they're Stairway to Heaven there. never gets to a real fast tempo. It's still relatively slow tempo. Just gets a little. The the singing heavier. just gets higher and higher pitched. I guess that's what it is. Okay, so we have to do some speed shading now. Just got three minutes to put in a few more values. And the into timer the is shoes. a suggestion. Let's just, see. That's it's, right. It's just a suggestion. It's twenty after. We technically have 10 minutes. 10 minutes of, of show left. Yeah. This might be a 50-minute drawing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just looking for anywhere I can add in some light grays. Yeah, Naomi C says, like the music from Sonic when you're running out of time. Exactly. Or drowning. Yes. Oh, the yes, drowning that's the music. Stuff we need. That's dun, dun, right. dun, 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 You know. That's, okay. that's right. <laughs> but that's copyrighted too. Yeah, it is. It is. But we would, we would need some music like that. But we're not going to do that. All right. Well, no way not as dark that. as I'd like to be. But <laughs> you know what? We've got to break these stitches up. Yeah, thanks, Margaret. Margaret reminds everybody, don't forget to like. So make sure you click that like button if you like this video, if you enjoy this kind of thing. Because if you don't like it, we won't do it anymore. You know? <laughs> can go bowling or something. Yeah. Um, there we go. Here comes the stitches. What in the world was I thinking when I picked this up? It's, got, it's like a thousand stitches in here. And this, so <laughs> well, if you erased them out, you know, you would, you'd still have the same issue. Yeah, and I actually, oh my gosh, there's you'd only still one have, minute left. You'd be left. making the dashes. It's okay. Don't, don't look at the timer. And, you know, I'm not just going straight through both lines because I want the stitches to be a little bit irregular. They're not totally lined up with each other. So I have to do each line at a time. Okay. And then the bottom of the stitches need a little curve to them. So, oh my gosh. Step three. So Good. we made thin white lines. <laughs> then we broke the thin white lines into a dotted line. And now we need to make each of these very slightly irregular by putting a little curve on the bottom. So they feel like they're bending into the shoe. Getting loose. Getting sketchy. Uh, Thomas says, gee, man, I could have hooked you up with the head at Foot Locker 30 years ago and see if you could design L <laughs> LOL. Um, and that would have been cool. Uh, yeah, I had, That would have been awesome. I had probably 30 or 40 shoe designs on my wall I, yeah, um, in my room. I used to love shoes. Oh, I'd like to see those love now. love drawing them. Yeah, I see how they compare. wouldn't be surprised if my parents have them somewhere. Well, if your mom's I like mine, she'll give you your side. old drawing for Christmas one day. Sometimes my mom gives me my old stuff oh, for Christmas. Does she? Yeah. My mom gives the trash can. My it's old like stuff. it's nostalgic, you know. It's yeah. the idea. <laughs> all right. Well, I tell you what. Um, I've got all the parts in here. Feel pretty good about that. I wish that I had time to go back and make quite a bit of this darker. I'm going to do a little bit, just a little bit of that, just to pump up the contrast where we can until Matt pulls the plug. Yeah, those darker values make a big difference. Yep. A full range of value. Getting just a little bit more of the feeling of form in the air. It's a little darker in a few places near the top right corner of the shoe also. Okay. Okay. 
Of course, going over your values in multiple directions helps to even them out. So you can keep changing direction with your pencil each time you revisit an area. Pat says, Ashley, I could watch you draw this type of, this type of detail for hours. Oh, I like the sound of that. And Ashley could draw this type of detail for hours. I think so. I think i got a couple hours of work left here. That's, so as Ashley's wrapping this up, just a quick um, quick review of the process. He, he First of all, made sure they had a picture plane that was proportional to the photo reference. That's right. Then used that picture plane to figure out points of interest where the objects went off of the edge of the picture plane. Used those points of interest to fill in the larger shapes. Then after he had the larger shapes, he went down to some more detail-oriented shapes. And then he started developing the values to, uh, or, or did the shading there to complete the drawing there. You got all those. Were you taking notes over there? Um, it was, those, were our, those were our steps. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's cause it it's just the, stuck in my mind. It's the same steps every time. <laughs> Same steps every time. It really doesn't matter sometimes when the subject changes. All right, just a little darker down here in the bottom of the label. Make that a little bit more round feeling. All right. Hmm. Okay, because value is kind of is relative, I went ahead and lightened my background just a little bit so that uh, the shoes will feel a little bit darker. Kate says wonky, a very important art term, <laughs> LOL. Yeah, and I use the word wonky a lot. I don't know where it came from. It's become popular in the last number of years. It's, I don't even know if it's a real word, but we all know what it means, right? <laughs> it's a very dis descriptive word. Precarious, maybe, kind of like that. All right. All right, there we go. There we go. All right. Pretty okay. Pretty okay. So um, tough. T it was a tough subject for a 45-minute sketch. I keep doing that to myself. Yeah, but I like it. Yeah. And so I think it's a challenging subject, but one that's perfect for the time period. Yeah. For the period of time you have to draw it, not for the 2020s. <laughs> <laughs> perfect for the, for the age in which we perfect live. Perfect for the decade we're in. Ma. Yeah, perfect for coronavirus year. And I don't know. <laughs> Gosh, don't say what that. we mean by that. I don't mean anything by that. Um, so there we go. All right, guys. I think that's going to wrap things all right. up here. I hope you guys enjoyed that and uh, talk the little bit of talk in there about dealing with and tackling um, challenging patterns and looking for a, maybe a simpler approach uh, to doing so. All right. And if you have a last minute question, now is the time to ask it because. We're going to say this one's done, and uh, we're going to wrap it up for tonight. And head over to the virtual instructor. That's right. So in the meantime, we'll go ahead and switch over here. All right. All right. Thank you guys for sticking around for the last hour. If you did, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I definitely enjoyed watching Ashley create this drawing. And more importantly, I hope you were able to pick up a couple of things, of course, that you can apply to your own drawing and, and sketches. Remember, we're doing sketches here on Getting Sketchy, obviously, and 45 minutes is a short period of time to develop a drawing completely. Uh, so keep that in mind, but we still use the same artistic muscles that we would use with a longer, more in-depth drawing when we create a sketch. So that's why it's so important for you to practice as much as you possibly can. So again, thanks so much for watching. Uh, remember, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already and click the notification bell. You can check out three course videos and ebooks by clicking on the link in the description below this video. And also check out our membership program, which is where we're heading next. 
Uh, I'm working on a landscape with pastels. We're going into part three of that series. Mm -hmm. So this will be the third hour uh, working on that. And uh, I'm excited to get back into that one. Yeah, and it's looking so, great too. Well, thank you. you. You guys who will be joining us over there, we'll see you in just a minute. For the rest of you guys, have a wonderful week. And also I should remind you that next week is uh, the day before Thanksgiving here in the United States. So we will not be broadcasting live next week. We will continue the week after that. Okay, so next week, no live broadcast. Week after that, we will pick things up. If you want to be notified, make sure you get on our newsletter list. Again, there's a link in the description below to do that. Those three free course videos and ebooks. All right, that's it, everybody. Uh, we're going to go ahead and sign out. Good night. <laughs>